All right, Indiana's Trace Jackson Davis um, up for player of the year, up for probably Big Ten player of the year. Uh, you know, I, I think the voting, they kind of already decided which they which way they were going to go with a 7-4 guy who's a friend of the program, but your your numbers are up definitely up there. Tough one last night. Um, do you Is that a strategy moving forward to spot them a 19-point lead? Do you think that's going to work long-term? Like, what's your – That was uh... – that was something that my me and my teammates just weren't quite ready for. And we made adjustments at halftime and kind of clawed our way back. But obviously when you get into that type of situation and you get down 19 on the road, it's really hard to win. And All so, right, yeah. so as long as it's not a long-term plan, like it's, you know, yeah. I think Co- coach Watson's a smart guy, but that can't be a smart thing to do long-term. Um, Absolutely. Not. Yeah. So the, you guys, I asked this to, to Chris Murray too. Do you guys think you kind of got written off a little bit early? We'll oh, get absolutely. to like the different stuff going on, but like it's a it's a long season, man. Did did people kind of put you in the grave early on? Yeah, I think um obviously we we're preseason Big Ten favorites. And then um I I get hurt in December, and then Xavier goes down, race goes down, yeah. all of a sudden we're one and four in conference, and everyone's just like, Oh, Indiana's 13th, they're not gonna come back, they're not like like we didn't have our talented freshmen. I finally got healthy stuff of that nature. And then we rattle off seven of eight. And so in third place now, obviously second yesterday, but third now. And so I think a lot of people wrote us off, but um, obviously coach Woodson is big on philosophies, big on, you just got to be, take it day by day and we'll find my way back. And that's what we did. Yeah. I mean, it is a long season. Like it's from the time you work with the summer and different stuff like that. Crazy. It's almost, I, you know, you enjoy, I guess, the journey, but is there almost like a little bit of a relief when you finally get to Selection Sunday and it's like, all right, you know, all this rat race bullshit of like, we're going to go from a five seed to a six seed and we're third in the Big Ten and second in the Big Ten. Like, yeah, those games are obviously in all those battles. They teach you a lot about yourself. But once Selection Sunday hits, it's like, all right, it's one and done. There's nothing. This is it. Like, it's a little bit of a relief of we're either going to win it all or we're going to get knocked out. Yep. I, I agree a hundred percent. And I think a big thing for me is like, I've always been in a situation where I've had to claw my way and try to get into the tournament because I've always been on the bubble. And so like these last, like February has always been the most stressful time. And like, it's stressful now because we're trying to compete for a big 10 championship, but it's a different type of stress. So like now I'm kind of just free to play. I think my teammates feel the same way where we're just free to play instead of trying to like claw our way, try to get in. So I think it's big for us, and um, I think it boosts our confidence a lot as well. Did Coach tell you last year, like, don't look at the updated? Because when it gets dicey down the end and somebody steals a bid, Lenardi's updating that thing, like, every four seconds. I remember we were playing in the Big Ten tournament the first game. We were down by, like, 19 and a half. We were off the bubble. We won that game. We were on the bubble, like, at the last spot. Then we beat Illinois, and we only jumped, like, two more spots still on the bubble. So we were like, so do we have to beat Iowa? Like, what's – What's going on? Like, I, I have no idea how that all of that works, but they got a system going. It's crazy. You know how you like when you were in computer class growing up and they used to block the game sites on the school yeah. websites? Like, you couldn't go play games and you couldn't obviously check, you know, dirty films and stuff like yeah. that. Coach, did Coach block bracketology, oh, yeah. like the search engines? Coach, Coach is different. He doesn't, he like his, he's like, there's no pressure. Like, he's just so old school. He's like, there's no pressure. You just need to go out and play. Like you said, they have a slotted right here right now. But if we win, then that takes that away. That's basically how he looks at it. So yeah, he doesn't right. really care about any of that. So so I don't know if it was necessarily like the turning point of the season, but I, I kind of think it was. Um, that letter that you posted when people were writing like horrific stuff to you. I've dealt with balancing <laughs> that too, like living on the internet. I'll be honest. Like I, I think if you do some research on me, you've kind of seen – I may have had some bad episodes. I don't know. You're laughing like you already know, but you know, so yeah. I, I deal with that too. Like it's a, it's a deeper conversation. And I know, I know that. And what's been told to me too. And I'm sure what's told to you guys as players, like, Oh, just block out that noise. Like, do you think we live in a world where you, you kind of can block all that out? I don't think you could block all of it out. Right. Like it's a, I know it's a deep conversation, but you can't block it all out. At least I can't. No, yeah, I agree 100%. It's like you can block out some of it. Like on Twitter, obviously, you got people that are always saying stuff about you. 
stuff of that nature. It is what it is. Like they have like four or five followers just trying to get a rise out of you. But then like when you got someone that just writes you a handwritten letter, sends it to your like university, it's just like over the top. And that was at the same time that Patrick McCaffrey like just yeah stopped playing because of mental health. So that's really why I did that was just to like show people that like this stuff is happening every day and like we all need to relax. Like obviously we want to win just as bad as the fans do. And like, but at the end of the day, it's still basketball and we're still human. So like, that's, that's basically what I was trying to get out of that. So. Yeah, no, Pat's a great kid. I, I, you know, I, I have talked to him a little bit about that too. Like, yeah, I just think, and I I think there's an element too, where people are like, oh, you know, you guys like you, you, oh, you have a great job. Like you work for a media company, same thing. You, hey, you play division one basketball. Like, what are your problems? Like this, you can't really control this thing. Like it, it hits you when it hits you. So that's, you know, to, to, for people to just be like, you got no problems. Like, you're, you know, you're six, nine, you're going to the NBA draft. Like, what are your problems? Like, nah, it's, you know, it's, it's a little bit deeper than that. I don't think people truthfully, like really respect that. No facts. I remember, I forget who it was, but he literally just stopped playing, got drafted maybe last year, two years ago. And he just retired because he said he couldn't deal with it anymore. Like, I forget who it was. I can't think of his name. Was it uh not Royce White? Who was the kid? Was it the kid from Iowa State? Do I remember that? Remember the kid who couldn't fly? He had trouble with that too. It might have been him, but I just remember seeing an article. It was like he just he just couldn't. He didn't love the game anymore. He just he was like I'm I'm more than a basketball player. Yeah, you know I I Isaiah Thomas. I watched an NBA. I think it was a TikTok or like a YouTube short or something like that. They said, you know, when did you decide like the game was you were done? He goes, you know, I was sitting around the pool one time. Uh, I think like in the, in the off season or like right in preseason. And it was like one o'clock I had practice at three and it was like, I don't want to go. He was like, that's when I knew like, all right, if it's, if it's not like, I used to love go, he's like, I used to love going to the gym. Once you kind of hit that, you know, yeah. you get burnt out. I think you see, I've talked to kids about that too, with Chris and stuff. Like, I think you can get burnt out. Like how many games have you played over the summer for your whole mm-hmm. life? Like add it up, you know, like it is a job. So no, you can absolutely. definitely get burnt out easily. Uh, that's why you just got to like, that's what our coach take it one day at a time. Like can't look ahead. You can't look at the past. Like you just got to be in the moment. So like you look ahead, you're like, damn, I got all these games left that I got to play. You look behind, you're like, damn, I played all these games. Like you just got to stay in the moment. Yeah. So. so you talk about Woodson, obviously, I think you are the leader on that team. How does it work with him? Uh, Cause it's different, obviously, you know, how you, you decide a leader or different elements or, or different um, relationships with guys. So is it one of those things you guys are always having, like, closed-door meetings? He's doing extra film. Like, it's expected of, hey, Trace, come in the office every day before practice. Or is he kind of letting you manage the team yourself as a leader? You know, because I've seen – I've heard about both, obviously. Yeah. Like, it's one of those he's on you all the time, tells you what you need to go, and then you go do it. Or he kind of – it's maybe it's once a week, once every two weeks. Like, how does that work? Um, honestly, there's a happy medium with him. Um, obviously, if I'm not doing what I'm supposed to be doing, he'll he'll let me know. But at the same time, I feel like ever since January, when I started picking up my play, I feel like he's he's seen that I've I've blossomed to the leader that he wanted me to be. So he's kind of let me take the reins. Um, obviously, he's still coaching. He's still doing what he needs to do, but he really lets me command the team. And I think my teammates have followed that as well. So, so Indiana, right. So you hear a lot about Duke and the brotherhood, yeah. right. And that whole thing. And I grew up a Duke fan, but Indiana has got a storied history as well. Absolutely. Is there, is there any kind of communication with that? You know, like Duke loves to publicize it is Indiana doing that, but they just keep it quiet. Like guys like Zeller, Oladipo, you know, Eric Gordon, like, are guys coming back? Are guys yeah. sitting around practice? Are guys reaching out like, hey, coach, give me his number, like kind of popping up? You're you're picking up a call you didn't expect? Uh, Yeah, honestly, um, a lot of guys have actually came back, especially when Coach Woodson got the job. I remember the first – our first game we had a pre uh, – like a pre thing in the Bahamas, and Eric Gordon came by just out of – randomly out of the blue. So – um, that was like the first time I've seen anyone. I remember Vic came my freshman year, but other than that, no one's really came. And then Zeller's been back a few times. And then you'd be, and then it's weird. I don't know why I just turned off, but <laughs> but um, guys like Scott May, um, Quinn Buckner, they come into practice every other day. Like it's it's crazy how much they're in. 
Let me see what this is. Yeah, it popped. Oh, it just went back on. All right. Yes. Oh, good. I don't know what's going on. Your teammates, obviously, you're, you're close with those guys. Uh, I've talked to Miller Cop a little bit, by the way. Shout out to Primal. Shout out to um, Primal. How to, how to do it for the boys. <laughs> so he gets he gets a little bit, and you see this in sports, like Travis Kelsey. Oh, he's a goofball, right? Like, you know, he he's he turns it up when he's when he's when the cameras are on, but like dude could ball out and takes himself pretty seriously. And I'm sure he's a leader in there. Miller, I'm sure, get like plays into a little bit of oh yeah, like I'm the goofball. He does the TikToks. Yeah. Uh, it was the TikTok game playing no defense that he kind of leaned into. But uh, like what's his what's his real makeup that people aren't seeing behind closed doors? I think with Miller, like they they see his TikToks and they just think like he's just like all about social media, all about all this other stuff. When honestly, I think he's probably the most hardworking person on our team. Uh, he's a gym rat. He's always at the gym getting shots up. He takes care of his body. He's doing all the little things. Um, he's texting our guys. He's making sure like if we have film, everyone's watching it, stuff of that nature. And so like they see all the things he does off the court. But he he does a really, really good job of managing both. And so uh, I salute him for that because it's hard to do. Yeah, I think that's an interesting thing in sports. Like, you know, the personality obviously helps you with media. If ever you wanted to get in TV and different stuff like that. And you look at those guys like Gronk. Gronk was a fucking animal. Gronk didn't miss <laughs> weight rooms. Gronk didn't miss any, you know. But he played into it of, of a little bit of both sides, you know. So it, it can definitely work out like that. And I think people – Love to just say, oh, well, he's a goofball. It's like, no, nah, once he's in the locker room, you kind of see how it's going, you know, Absolutely. for sure. So uh, so you test, you tested the process last year in, in terms of the okay. draft and then kind of got screwed with the corona thing. Was yes. that one of those things where it was almost like, hey, it's a sign? Like, yeah, you know, you you, I, I'm not going to put words in your mouth of which way you would have gone, but obviously playing in the NBA is a, is a dream. Mm -hmm. I guess it was one of those things. I'm not a big, like, signs guy. Um, That's for Jersey Jerry. But – uh. Was it one of those things like, all right, I, I got dealt this blow, like it is what it is. I'm 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 going back, you know, and yeah. trying to make the best of it. It was crazy, honestly, because like when I tested positive, I wasn't sick at all. So I was like, okay. And like, so I was in Brooklyn actually, and they were doing, and it was a random because someone in their program, like they weren't supposed to have tests. And then someone in their program tested positive like the night before. And so they gave us a random test and then they're like, yeah, you tested positive, but your levels are so low. So we think that you already had it. And then, so I tested and then all of a sudden they tested me the next day and my levels went up, but I wasn't sick at all. And then I'm pretty sure it was, I had Brooklyn. What's up? dog? I had Brooklyn, uh, Milwaukee and Indiana for workouts. And, um, and then the draft, like the NBA combine. And so I had all that and I tested positive all the way through all of those and so like at that point I missed like half of the half of my draft workouts half like did the whole combine like everything was like messed up so at that point I was like I might as well just go yeah back. now now be now be be honest <laughs> when you thought you were going were you <laughs> were you behind and then had to come back were you behind on classes were you like I'm out of here I don't have to worry about were you like and then in the middle of April or whatever it was when you had to come back, were you like, oh, shit, I got to make up all this work? No, actually, <laughs> uh, all my classes were online, so I was chilling. So I, right. was actually, I was actually keeping up with everything. So I was – All right. Bro. You're, a better, you're a better man than me. I would have been checking the boards as long as I'm in, like, 45. and be like, all right, I got 15 spots. We're even if I fall, I'm going. I ain't doing this class. I would have showed up the last day with, like, a bouquet of roses or something or a bottle of wine for the guy. I would have <laughs> – so that shows what kind of leader you are. You, you definitely deserve – yeah. Uh, credit for that because I would have been checked out. Yeah, I, I I've been there a few times, but I always I always usually get back on track. So makes sense. Um, all right, Illinois Saturday, and then you obviously got this stretch run where it's like, um, just brutal. What's what's kind of the key in the matchup against Illinois, or what do they kind of bring to the table? Because they're like you guys, you know. I I watched them live beat Texas when yes. when when Beard was still there. They've yeah. kind of fallen. They go up and down. You know, guys in and out like. It's really – it's tough to tell, really, of these Big Ten teams. You know, the same. Like, people could have said, you guys were dead, I was dead. And you look at the seed lines, it's 5-5-6 five, five, six, or 6-6-7. Six, six, so that yeah. means top 28, top 32 in the country. You know, yeah. and these were these were teams that were dead. So that goes again to prove the long season. But what does Illinois kind of bring to the table? That's a tough tough spot for them. Um, 
with me, I think they're they're really good. They have really good guards, um, really really good guards, especially with Terrence Shannon. Um, I think that's a big key for us. He kind of popped off against us the first time. He had about twenty six. He's a downhill guard. Um, he gets that crossover step back three, and he's he's been shooting at a high clip too. And then the same thing with Matthew Mayer. I think he was sick the first time we played him, but he didn't. I don't think he scored, and so that was big for us. And then. They got Dane in the middle and Coleman Hawkins. And so the, they can just really stretch the floor and you can't let them get going in transition. And so that's going to be a big emphasis for us. I, Assembly Hall is going to be rocking. And so I don't know if they played in an environment like that, but um, hopefully the crowd's on our side. But we're going to have to bring it because I bet you they want revenge because we got them that first time on their home floor. So Yeah, for sure. So I'll get you out of here on a couple of quick ones. Right, you good. Best basketball movie. Best basketball movie. Man, I really like Coach Carter. Probably okay. Coach Carter. I'd go He Got Game. He Got Game is up there, too. Yeah. He Got Game is definitely up there. Loving Basketball is up there. Yeah, that, there's a few. There's a lot of classics. Hard to choose one. I haven't seen a few of them, like Sunset Park. I haven't seen the full I haven't seen the full thing of Above the Rim. I'll tell you, what about this one? Did you watch Hustle? Hustle was good. Ah, uh, no way. Hustle, Hustle was good. It wasn't. It wasn't crazy, but it was decent. Even the storyline, like he, I he kind of knew what was going to happen, though. I thought that was just a, and I like Sandler. You know, like I grew when he was funny, and then he had a bad stretch. But I just thought that was a cameo fest. Like, let's just, it's just a cameo fest. Um, <laughs> one game. No disrespect to Coach Woodson. It can't be Coach Woodson. Okay. One game to play for a coach. Ever alive or dead, where you could be like, oh, you know what? I would, I would love to play a game. You get a week of practice before, so you get to experience it. But like, you're like, hey, I would love to play for that guy. One game, NBA, college. We'll do college and NBA. College and NBA. For NBA, I would definitely choose Phil Jackson. But for college, honestly, probably a toss up between Izzo or probably Coach K. Yeah, so I got to play with Coach Self. For USA basketball, he would have been up there too. But I like. Oh that. yeah, how was that? How was that experience? That was really cool. Um, we had a lot of we had a lot of pros on our team. We had who was it? Quentin Grimes, Cole Anthony, uh, Matthew Hurt, Vernon Carey, uh, Kobe White. Like we had some studs. We were blitzing teams. So yeah, but it was a really good time. He's a great coach. How's his adjustments? He gets a ton of. I think his his sets out of timeouts, and I still can't figure out how nobody can stop that circle lob play for the inbounds. Oh, it's ridiculous. 20 – I did a TikTok. It's 20 years of this <laughs> thing, and just people just stealing it. It's crazy. It's 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 just the fact that they've been so good for so long, you just have to credit him because, like, you see programs, like, they're not saying they're bad, but you they have bad years, and Kansas is just – they're always top tier. Like they don't lose at home, like it's it's rare. It's yeah, ridiculous. he's. I think it's twenty years. I think he's ten ten one seeds in the last twenty years. Yeah, that's ridiculous. It's insane what he's you know, and then a bunch of elite eights. Like they love to say the bad losses, but I think every program has had a bad loss in the no. tournament. So you can't really knock this guy. So yeah, he's just he's fascinating. Um, and then one player in college right now to play a game with. So if there was like an open draft market, you'd be like, oh, you know what, I'd love to play with him. One player, I think it would be funny, but I think it would be funny to play with Zach Eady. Yeah. Um, imagine. Uh, just imagine that. me, Him at the five, me at the four. I think that would be cause some problems for some teams. That high, I don't know how you defend that high low. Yeah, I, I was like, thinking back at it, it could have really happened because obviously Purdue was in my top six. Oh, I really? Mean, yeah, Purdue was in my top six. I remember Iowa. If I would have went to Iowa, I, I would have been playing with Luca Garza and Keegan. Like it, it would have been ridiculous. Like so, what the, was it? What was it down to? It was Purdue, Indiana, Iowa, uh, Michigan State. I would have played with Cassius my first year, and then UCLA. They went to that Final Four. Like I had some pretty good options. So no, for sure. Yeah, it's just that's great. Yeah, you and Edie. That would have been that would have been interesting. So <laughs> very interesting. Um, yeah, listen, big one coming up. You know, obviously, and then the, the stretch run. At, I like I said. I I mean, I commend you guys dealing with a lot of that shit and and um, guys going out. You know, you going down, like sticking with it. We talked about it. it's a long season, so it's uh, 
it's definitely interesting to watch a team like people panic right away, you know, like, yeah. oh, they're done. They're, you know, <laughs> it three games. just let it, yeah, let it, let it play out. That's my advice. Like, let it, let it all play out. So, um, and then I guess with the last piece of advice, don't make it and don't win the Big Ten championship because you're only going to get screwed with the seed. Yeah, we're going to ask gonna, my boys, uh, ask my boys from Iowa last year. They got screwed. It's ridiculous. Yeah. You, and then you get four days off. Like everyone plays their conference tournament a week before, and then we're playing ours the Sunday, and then we play on Thursday. Like, well, that's they put them in the early slate too. Yeah. It's especially if the travel's not easy. So they got, they got to figure that out. But maybe that's ridiculous last year without a doubt. Yeah. So, all right. Listen, man, I appreciate you jumping on. Obviously, the best of luck. And, uh, let me know. Yeah. Tr- maybe you suggest one of those, uh, those words in the press conference to Miller. <laughs> yeah, mix it, it up mix it up on him all right all right take it easy trace yes, sir appreciate you